someone who's been in the rock and roll scene for over 40 years, and that would be John Anderson of Yes. We're going to go in and talk to John. Let's see what he has to say. Come on. Hey, it's Sally Steele. We're here at the Ovation talking with the legendary John Anderson of Yes. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? <laughs> Just great. We're glad that you're here uh, in uh, Las Vegas. It's been a little while since you've been here. It's been a year since I was here in this wonderful Hamilton. Are we in Hamilton? Henderson. Henderson. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I am. <laughs> well, you're a U.S. citizen. Where do you live now? Oh, yes. I, I became an American two years ago. I live in Central California with my beautiful wife, Jane. And I've been living here 25 years, so I thought I'd better... In fact, I better become an American so I can say what I want now, so they can't throw me out. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Well, you, you certainly have a platform to do it. Oh, to say yeah, what you want. I can say stuff, and there's plenty of stuff to say. Okay. You have such a great voice. Did you always, growing up, did you want to be a singer? Well, yeah, well, me and my brother Tony, uh, we worked on a local farm, and uh, we sang Everly Brothers songs. This is like 1954, 55, 56, and then Elvis happened, and Buddy Holly, and, and then the Beatles. In fact, I sing about it tonight. I do a song called Tony and Me, so I reminisce, oh, right. I reminisce about seeing the Beatles just before they became famous when they l released Love Me Do. And from that moment, I just wanted to be a beetle. I wanted to be famous and be a beetle. No more working on the farm for you. Oh, damn. F forget that. You know, getting up at 5.30 every morning. God, I was doing that since I was 10 years old till about 17. And then I joined a band with my brother in uh, 63. And then you found out, well, rock and roll is a lot better than milking these cows. Oh, damn right. <laughs> damn right. <laughs> the hours are better, too. Well. Damn right, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, y when you, tell me how it came about, uh, just briefly, like, how did the formation of Yes happen? You met some of the guys? Very simple. Uh, I've been in my first band for about five years, and then the guys uh, kicked me out of the band because I just wanted to rehearse, and they wanted to party. Damn those musicians. Damn. And uh, we were a good band, but I was living in Germany. In fact, I, I lived in uh, uh, this place in Munich. Uh, I was looked after by two beautiful uh, groupies, and they were very famous, you know. And what were their names? Oh, um, it'll come to me in a minute. And uh, they looked after me because I was high on L LSD for about a year. And I remember Jimi Hendrix came to a party at their house. We went to see him play, which was amazing. And he came over and sat down next to me and we smoked a joint together. That's my claim to fame there. Wow. And then I went back to London. I started working in a bar, which was a, above this uh, very famous uh, club called the Marquee Club. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, every, every night people would come in like uh, Pete Townsend and uh, Keith Emerson and, you know, Paul McCartney popped in now and again, Hendrix, and all these people would come in and I'd be cleaning up and washing the glasses and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day Chris Squire came in and he was down the bottom end of the, the bar uh, looking very upset about something. And I went over and said, hi, how you doing? And I'm I said, I'm looking for a band. And he said, well, I've got a band and we need a singer. I said, I'm the guy. But his okay. band was called Mabel Greer's Toy Shop. And I said, that name is so long. Let's, let's call it something short and we eventually called it yes all right well that that's a, a nice short name from the other one <laughs> yes story of my life now i i heard i read somewhere that they nicknamed you napoleon in the band why was that well i'm small and i was like come on let's rehearse guys let's do something really different and stop trying to be a rock star idiots and put that pint down and stop smoking and let's get on with rehearsals i do that every day okay my, and we became a great band you know you had to push a few buttons to get everybody working together, you know. And you did it. You did a great job. Yeah. Um, I, I also read somewhere that you studied spiritual uh, meditation or something, and it w you were able to see the fourth dimension. Is that... Do you well, I don't know how that got around, but yeah. It was on Howard Stern, I think. Oh, it Howard's just silly. Howard Stern. What does he know? <laughs> Well, it was on. He he said he yeah. said that you studied spiritual and you saw the fourth dimension. I yeah, I I do it all the time. I mean, you know, everybody can develop that uh, connection with uh, the 
the be beautiful and magical Mother Earth through meditation. And it just takes a lot of practice, and I practice every day. And now and again, I see beautiful things surrounding me, and uh, I look at nature on such a level that it's uh, it's magnificent. You know, nature and uh, birds and bees and the animals, the trees, the flowers blows my mind. You know, it's got very little to do with Vegas, but what's the real world? You know, it's like we are indigenous people, really, and we should reconnect to Mother Earth and be the caretakers and the gardeners of Mother Earth. I'll be singing about that tonight. Oh, great. What did you see in the fourth dimension, though? Well, fairies and divas are all light beings. You know, they, they live in a they live in the fourth dimension. They're slowly moving into the fourth, fifth dimension as we slowly move into the fourth dimension from the third dim dimension. And it's a very slow process. It takes hundreds and hundreds of years. But we are slowly reconnecting with our divine uh, respect for divine Mother Earth. And that's a good thing. All right, cool. Coming full circle. What do you think keeps rock and roll alive? Youth, the youth of the spirit of youth and uh, revolution, man, come on, revolution, peace on earth and goodwill to all, all men. And uh, John Lennon said it best give peace a chance. Yes. So there you have it, rock is not dead. John Anderson says so. And I know. <laughs> well, thank you for uh, meeting with us today. Thank you very much. Uh, we can't wait to see your show tonight. It's a lot of fun. We love having you here in Hamilton, Las Vegas. Just, hey. Just kidding. <laughs> Henderson, you got to know where to come I back. So. I am, you know. I'm okay. Okay. Well, thank you for your time today, John, and uh, congratulations on such a, an incredible career. Thank you very much.